Well, hello there. I want to talk about the 12th house. Everybody has one. Doesn't matter if you have a planet there or not. You have a planet that rules the 12th house. And you have a planet that's in the 12th house. Okay, so everybody has one. The 12th house is the beginning. It's the end and the beginning. It's the beginning of the end. The 12th house used to be, whatever's in the 12th house in the last cycle was in the first house. And the planets go boop, 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 and they move around the chart uh, clockwise. So according to the ancients, um, the way this works is that the reason the 12th house is problematic is that, for instance, let's just do the sun. The sun is a thing. Say the sun was in your first house um, in the last cycle, your past life, whatever, your last incarnation, your last thought, <laughs> I don't know. Whatever it was, the before time, it was in the first house. You can see the sun here in the first house. This is where you get to be the star of your own show. This is where, you know, you, uh, you, you're, the, you're the guy. You're, you're, the, you're the doer of your life, your soul. When your son is on the ascendant, the soul is happy to be here and it knows its job. It's joy of being is easy. And for this Scorpio person, it's like, oh, I'm a deep diver. I am a passionate beer. Um, you know, all the good Scorpio stuff is, is all about being sincere and deep. So, you know, there's that. Now, watch when we when we go forward. Ooh. The sun pops into the 12th house. Now, that seems odd because it's antithetical and it goes up from 1 into 12. Well, the planets go that way and, and the, the time goes the other way. So what we have is like what they have in physics where, it, it, where, where one thing goes clockwise and another goes counterclockwise. And the motions of the two opposite directions is the motion that creates life. That's what I think. Anyway, so here's the, the sun then popping up into the 12th house. Well, what it's saying is that you've been the star of the show and now you're moving into being in a different realm. You're, you're moving into the more, you're, you're checking into your self-inquiry. Uh, you have to take a moment, take a breath, slow down, and you're not the star of the show right now, you know, and then it moves up into the 11th house, and that's getting closer to uh, noon, so then that has a different meaning, that's where you get to step out of your introspection and into um, an association with several different people or a club or a group of some kind, you see, and your ideals then come into focus, so that's how that works. And now, in the now, it's moved up one. And so now it's in the 12th, which means you don't get this, the personal attention that you used to get. That's, that's why the 12th house is problematic, because you, you don't get the goodies. You used to get the goodies, and now you don't get those goodies anymore. So that's how the 12th house works. And that's why it's a pain in the ass, and that's why everybody's like, wah, wah, victim, victim. Well, you know... I, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm a 12th house person and I'm old. So I've been through a lot of shit with the 12th house. And I have to tell you, uh, it's a journey. It's a freaking pain in the butt journey. But once you kind of get the hang of it, it feels pretty good. But not at first. And it depends on, on the energies there too. For instance, mine is ruled by Taurus. And so, um, but my ruling planet is Mercury in Taurus. So my ruling planet is in the 12th. That means that all the issues of victimization and losership and failure and not good enough are like sort of impued into my whole chart. So it's all about learning how to find the okayness in shit that society tells you is not okay. Because really this is a f final, all right, it's like a, it's combat between what society tells you to do and what your instinct knows you should do or can do or can't do. It's like, I know what I'm capable of. And so all this self-help shit doesn't help. It just makes me feel bad about myself because it makes, means I'm still a fuck up, right? So what, what you have to do with the 12th house is go, eh, I don't care. I don't care what they say. I don't care if I ride my horse backwards because I really think 12th house and Hayoka has a lot in common. So it's like, I don't care. I'm riding my horse backwards very proudly. 
and um, that's you know and you feel good about it you have to start feeling good now they talk about you feel small because you're in the ocean because it's oceanic and it's the ocean is the universe though it's it's how small you are in the universe and I love to take pictures of my cat in the woods because he's so tiny compared to the big huge trees and mountain so that's how you feel right you're you're the smallest pond there and yet you know that ponds can make a huge difference in the game you know chess if you don't know chess trust me that's what they tell me I don't know chess either that's just what I hear I watch the I watch the series the chess girl anyway so my point being you um you get this feeling that you're a loser and you're a failure or you're a victim and you don't have any power but what you come to realize what I came to realize is that I have a lot of power but the power isn't in like active participation in society's bullshit it's active participation in my own inner life and that can be delusional yeah delusional is one of the words and I could really be like full of some kind of fakery on myself but if that's what it takes to be happy then so fucking be it. I decided to be happy. I decided to be happy, and I like what the car guys used to say, which was, would you rather be right, or would you rather be happy? And uh, I've been trying to be right all my life, and it just put me in fights. It just made me run away. It just made me a mess. And lately, I've just decided, eh, I'd rather be happy. And it's a huge relief. It's a huge, huge relief when you realize that if you can find happiness where you are, then you're in charge. That is what we're talking about here. You be in charge of yourself by controlling your reactions, your emotions, and you do that with self-talk. I mean, that's how I do it. I'm a, I'm a Gemini, so, and I'm ruled by, and my big boss is, is Mercury, and boss is my whole chart. So for me, I'm real thinky-thinky. Well, thinky touchy because it's in Taurus too, right? So, here, let me fix my hair. It's kind of like looking in the mirror talking to myself. This is really cool. All right. So, anyway, um, yeah. You talk to yourself. You figure out um, what kind of self talk is going to talk you through this really horrible feeling you have right now. This feeling of anger. Oh boy, have I got the inner anger. <laughs> Just Venus and Aries. Yeah, kick some ass. But, you know, just talk yourself through that. And I've gotten to where it's like, okay, I don't care what you say. And, you know, all that new age hippy-dippy stuff, it works to a point. You know, if you say, um, uh, what, you, what you say about me is none of my business, that's a good one. It doesn't always work because, you know, you still get your feelings hurt. But if you can keep saying that and do your best to really get into the feeling of, I really don't care what they think, and I really do understand. See, understanding is a great keyword for the 12th house. I really do understand that what they're saying is about what they are and what they think and what they do and how they feel. If you spot it, you got it. I really understand that stuff. And so when I really understand it, that's the point when I can just be more objective or I can just go, eh. I don't have to argue with this person. I'm not ever going to win. What they say with a narcissist, if you get fight with a pig, you're just going to get muddy and the pig likes it. So, in other words, we're all narcissists to each other anyway, to a degree. But my point is that, yeah, you once you figure this all out and you can really sincerely understand it in your cellular level, because that's what this takes, really, is a lot of introspection. Tons of introspection. Introduction fiction. <laughs> so, you get it? The twelfth house. It is about introspection. It is about um, peaceful joyfulness if you are willing to be in your box and figure out how to be comfortable and how to be happy. And realize that, you know, I made mistakes like one after the other, bippity boppity boo. And so now I'm kicking myself because I don't like my life. But actually, I like my life a lot. And I've got some great choices and some great friends. And so when you figure that out and you can be at peace, that's the, where the moksha, the joy of the 12th house comes.
Okay, later.